This is an introduction to OCLC First Search. And I'm gonna start off with a few examples of, uh, well, two, two of them are actually um, real life examples from my time of working at the reference desk. Uh, I did have a patron one time, they were cleaning out a deceased uncle's outbuildings at his farm, came across this old boat motor, and they wanted to see if they can fix it and get it fi uh, working. So they needed a manual. We didn't have it at the library. And so I did an interlibrary loan for a Evan Rude Johnson outboard shop manual. Uh, they're thinking the motor was somewhere maybe 1970, 1972 era. So I was able to get them the manual for them to work on this boat motor. And they actually did get it running. And we've had different patrons throughout the years who have read in another language. Uh, this example here is a Nora Roberts book in Portuguese, uh, but I've had patrons that read in Russian. I've had patrons that read in Serbio -Cro Croatian. I've had patrons that read Japanese. I've had re patients or patrons that read in Spanish. And so we've gotten foreign language books uh, that we don't have in either North Dakota or, or definitely not in our library, but in, not in North Dakota, we've had to get them from other states. And also works for popular fiction um, or not so popular fiction. Uh, we did have a patient that was really into reading Star Trek books and he wanted to read the novels written by William Shatner. We didn't have them at our library. So of course we would have to do an interlibrary loan. And so what is interlibrary loan? It's a uh, represents a mutual agreement among libraries in North Dakota and throughout the United States to share our library's resources. Uh, while libraries try really hard to serve the needs of their patrons and the interests of their communities, all of our resources are limited. We don't have an unlimited budget to buy books, so it's nearly impossible to purchase everything that may be of interest to everyone. With interlibrary loan, we can enhance our ability to provide our patrons with materials that they need and they want. Um, this is our email addresses uh, that you can submit interlibrary loan requests. Either one of these email addresses would work. Uh, they both will be answered by our patron services department. The first one is our general email address. It's statelib at nd.gov. We also have an interlibrary loan email address, ndslill -L -L at nd.gov. They'll both be answered by the same uh, people. So if you have an interlibrary loan request, uh, you can either submit it through either one of those email addresses. And let me show you how you get to first search from here. If I go to online library resource, resources, and we're looking for Rural Cat First Search. And so Rural Cat First Search is a online union catalog containing millions of bibliographic records uh, that were all cataloged by OCLC member libraries, including the North, the North Dakota State Library. Uh, items catalog can include books, audiobooks, DVDs, VHS, cassettes, music cassettes, music audio, uh, magazines, journal articles. I, there's just a ton of information that you can be found through RollCat. There are three ways you can search it. Basic search and advanced search are probably the two that most heavily used. There is an expert search if you know search commands or want to learn search commands, you can use the expert search. Most of the times I find everything with either using the basic search or the advanced search. Your basic search allows you to search by keyword, author, title, an ISBN number, if you happen to have one. Uh, you can also do a uh, year range. Your advanced search allows you a little bit more options as far as searching. You have the ability of doing uh, combining search terms. Also, you have more search terms that you can search by. You can search by uh, material types. You can search by title, title phrase. You can also search by series titles. Uh, standardized numbers such as ISBN, ISSN, 
publishers. So there's much more um, search options in the advanced than you do have in the, in the uh, basic. You also have some limiters. You can limit to a year range. Uh, languages, this is where you were able to look up for that books in Portuguese or Spanish or Japanese. And these will limit to books written in that language. You can also limit by type. You can limit by books, visual materials. Visual materials will let, help you find those DVDs or VHS uh, sound recordings. You can limit by sound recording. If you drop down any content and you select sound recordings and you select non-musical recordings, this is a good way of uh, narrowing down to audiobooks. Limit by either juvenile or not juvenile. And you have some options for formatting. You can limit by visual material to DVD uh, or VHS. You can also limit by uh, under format if you're searching for books and you're looking for large print books. There is a uh, format for large print books as well. So I'm going to go back to our basic search here, and I'm going to show you a few things with OCLC records and how to submit interlibrary loans straight from first search. And then I'll talk about a couple other different ways that you can submit interlibrary loan. And I'm going to use one of the examples I had up in the slide. As you notice, it does remember searches and search terms. And here we go, Star Trek Avenger by William Shatner. Uh, it's gonna tell you what format is. So the document is a book. Uh, this one over here is a non-music rec sound recording and cassette tape. And the one below us is a, it's a internet resource. So this would be an ebook. Another thing you want to note is libraries worldwide that own this item. There's 823 libraries that own this item. Uh, worldwide, um, OCLC libraries are not just in the United States. They're all over the world. And so they're all adding records into, uh, into WorldCat. If I click on to the record itself, it's going to tell us what the, who the authors are. If there happens to be an edition, it'll tell you what edition it is. All of the hyperlink links here are searchable. So if you want to find more books about written about or written by William Shatner, you can click on the name William Shatner. Uh, your descriptors here, if you're just interested in Star Trek fic fiction, you can click on um, Star Trek fiction. You can also do it over here in genre forms. Click on any of these science fiction, Star Trek fictions. These will all do another search for you. Uh, there is what's known as an extension number. This is an OCLC. This is a unique uh, number for this particular record. And there's also ISBN numbers as well. And so there's a lot of information that you can pull off of a record. Now you can submit the, uh, an interlibrary loan request just from first search here by emailing the bib. And so you can send it to either one of those email addresses, either ndsll at nd.gov. Uh, you can also use the state lib account. You can put your email address in, I'll just put mine in. You can put your name in there. You can put the name of your school or your library in there as well. Um, subject. Put in something like ILL request. And then you have a note field. Um, you can put in a barcode number. Or you could put in, let's say you had a need by date that you wanted to put in there. You could put a need by date in there. And then once you get it all filled out, you can click send. And that's one way you can uh, do a for uh, a request through first search. Uh, the other way you can just send an email. And if you're going to send an email, you'd want to send the author, the title. Uh, you could send an ISBN number and all that information is available 
you can certainly put that information in there. If you put in this Ascension number that I talked about, uh, you can put that into the re uh, into the request and that they can look it up by that Ascension number. And you could submit ILL requests this way as well, just using your regular email address or email and sending an email to the uh, patron services division. And the third way you can submit in a library loan. And where it says more libraries, I'm already signed in as an account. So of course you'd want to sign in first. Um, where it says um, more libraries, you can drop this down to OCLC WorldCat. And I could place the request in the catalog. And those are three different ways that you can submit an interlibrary loan request. Uh, the difference between doing it in the catalog using the search feature here and um, using first search is first search, if you don't have an exact title and author um, and you're needing to do a little bit more research, the first search is actually better to do that than it would be to do the catalog. With the catalog, you're limited by these um, search fields. Whereas in the first search, if you go to, uh, particularly if you go to the advanced search field, you have a lot more options as far as searching. And so, you know, if it's something that you're not completely sure if you know what the author and title are. Let's say it's a subject search. Uh, I would use the first search. And then you can just look it up if you want to use the catalog. Uh, you can actually put in the, the author and title once you get into, once you find it in first search. So I'm going to go back here. There's a couple of things I do want to point out on this example. So I had a patron whose cousin recommended this book called A Long Weekend by uh, Fiona Palmer. And if you look at the worldwide libraries, 212, that's a pretty good number on doing a request. But if I click on worldwide, one thing you'll notice is that all the libraries that happen to have this are in Australia or New Zealand. And so we wouldn't be able to do an interlibrary loan since we don't do international interlibrary loan. And so for that one, I wouldn't be able to fulfill that request, even though it did show that there was a lot of libraries that own it, they're all overseas. Uh, we only do interlibrary loan in the United States. Actually, we only do interlibrary loan with 49 out of 50 states in the United States. We don't interlibrary loan to Hawaii. Uh, the other thing you want to watch is if people re start requesting things, a lot of genealogical resources, uh, historical resources, anything that's really old, those are usually kept in closed collections, and those aren't available through interlibrary loan. So for instance, I wouldn't be able to get this centennial book. Uh, these are all at universities, probably in their archives or their genealogy sections. And you would have to actually travel to those archives, those collections, those special libraries and use those items. So generally, if there's only four libraries that own it, chances are not going to be very good that we'd be able to get an interlibrary loan for those items. Also depends on what the libraries are. So you'd want to open it up and see what libraries actually own those. If it's a public library, there might be a chance that we can get it. 
um, if it's a university or if it says like state archives or uh, special collections, uh, those are all um, key terms that probably we won't be able to get that item. Uh, if you want to take down those two email addresses, if you haven't had a chance. And if you do have any questions about our services or any other questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, there is the 800 number. That's another way you can do requests. You can just call us and ask for the item. Uh, you can call at 1-800-472-2104. It's our 800 number. Or you can call directly to the patron services desk, which is 701-328-4622. And you can also use the state lib at nd.gov for any questions whatsoever. Okay, seeing that there aren't any questions, I'll conclude this webinar. I want to thank you for your uh, time. And if there's any way that we can answer any questions about interlibrary loan or any other services that we offer, please feel free to reach out to us.